Okay. So the innovation and entrepreneurship are part of the Lebanese DNA, as we all know. And many North American startups have Lebanese among their founders. And some of the Lebanese startups are ready and looking forward to expand into the North American market with the support of the diaspora for sure. So this panel will highlight the opportunities and expertise needed uh, to collaborate and make sure that we create that bridge between North America and Lebanon and use both ecosystems to expand this, this Hola. ecosystem. Hola. Okay. Uh, in this panel, in this first panel, we will present the current status of the Lebanese ecosystem and the need for it to bridge with other ecosystems, discuss how startups have benefited from being part of the Lebanese and the North American ones, discuss what ecosystems VCs and corporates in North America and Canada in particular are looking for to attract foreign innovation and expand its, uh, the international ecosystems, and what the current ecosystem can offer to the startups that have a product market fit in North America. With me today, I have uh, uh, six panelists. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Maroon Shammas. Uh, Maroon, you've been uh, pioneering uh, with Veritech uh, the Lebanese ecosystem. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about uh, Lebanon, the entrepreneurship support over the years, how the current ecosystem is made, uh, what type of players, uh, including incubator accelerators and VCs, are there, and give us an overview of the landscape uh, and what are the opportunities and the challenges to grow such an ecosystem? Okay. Thank you, Rami. Uh, I, I wish uh, Minister Basile joined us so we can, uh, so he doesn't miss anything because he missed the first part in the morning. Okay, thank you. All right. So the, eco the ecosystem started 15 years ago with uh, an initiative of the St. Joseph University. Um, I, I, there are some slides, if we can put them through, so we will give, thank you, thank you. Because I have to tell something. Uh, in 2008, Minister Basile was appointed Minister of Telecom. And I'm going to remind you of something that happened. Um, you asked, you wanted to meet the people who work in telecom. Do you remember? And we did a gathering. To, yeah, we, there were 50 people. We did a gathering in Haptour for two days. And Minister Basile, he spent uh, the night there, he prepared a white paper, and he said, this is the roadmap for telecom in Lebanon. You remember that? And I, uh, I went up to his room at 7.30 in the morning, <laughs> and we came down. And um, it, it's to tell you that uh, the ecosystem actually started 15 years ago. Uh, there are a couple of slides, if we can put them. I'm going to give you an idea of what's going on now in Lebanon in a couple of uh, slides. Okay, can we have it on the monitor, please? So I don't have to turn. Okay, you see on the top left of the screen, there are the incubators and the accelerators. Those are the entities that are supposed to help the startups. So you have many, I'm not going to cite them. Then you have the financial institution, which is the BDL, which oversees a bit or plays the role of the accelerator in terms of money. You have the different support groups such as Beritech, Alt City, and so on. And on the bottom, you have the enablers. So the, those are the organizations that help all the support system. And then you have the funding, which comes out of the Circular 331. And then you have the support organization. So we can talk about this is the landscape today in Lebanon. We cannot talk still about an ecosystem. Because an ecosystem is when you have five pillars, which is government, education, banks, SMEs, and entrepreneurs that all work together. The lines are still not connected all, but we have the landscape. So we have the different groups. They need to talk more and more between each other. Um, the next slide, please. Okay, uh, five, four, four years ago, uh, the central bank started what we know as Circular 331. Circular 331 injected some $400 million in the economy. And we have about 10 funds 
So Leap Venture, Impact, Veritech Fund, uh, Cedar Mundi, BNY, Phoenician, Azure Fund, and Lebanon Seed Fund, Flat6 Lab. Those you can see the amount of money that the BDL has accepted or has incorporated within those funds. And you have non 331 funds, which is uh, Insure and Match Capital, ISME program, Sanad, Veritech Fund number one, and MIC Fund, which is uh, the uh, two operators. So we have about $450 million that are available for startups in Lebanon. This means that we don't, uh, uh, I mean, there are enough funds in Lebanon if you have the right idea, if you have the right approach, and if you have the right team, okay? So next slide, please. Okay. Those are some of the success stories that you've been hearing about, and Rami, Scripters, uh, Carpolo, Loop, and so on. Some of these companies have been uh, showcasing here, and some you can find them on the web. So in a nutshell, uh, the landscape is there, the companies are there, we have bright young entrepreneurs. What we are missing, and here is where the role of Canadians come in, and North Americans, we miss, if you want, the accuracy and the very systematic approach that unfortunately we don't have as Lebanese. We're a little bit uh, in our approach. Uh, entrepreneurs in Lebanon need to get more accurate. They need to have much more laser sharp uh, approach to the businesses that they are creating. They are now creating good companies, but these companies, to be sustainable, they need to address international markets, and those international markets can only be approached when you have a very systematic approach. Now, I, I want to just uh, conclude by saying that there are a lot of structure that supports the entrepreneurs, and I myself am also, uh, I've created a foundation that uh, provides on a yearly basis $100,000 for entrepreneurs as a support, and I'm uh, launching it out of uh, uh, Montreal, and the official announcement will be in, uh, in Beirut on uh, uh, October 11th. Okay. No. No? Uh, th those are, this is not in technology. We're talking about technology. I'm making technology. <laughs> <laughs> okay. لا فلافل جيمز فلافل جيمز فلافل جيمز جيمز مش فلافل كومباني اوكي اه انسيدنتلي ذي ار ناو مور ذان 3000 جوبز ذات هاف بين كرييتد ان تكنولوجي دايركت جوبز اند اباوت 15000 جوبز ذات هاف بين كرييتد ان ذا لاست 4 ييرز ان لبنان سو ذس از هذا حجم السوق اليوم ان تيرمز اوف امبلويمنت Thank you so much, Marwan. Uh, definitely, as you mentioned, there is the landscape. The ecosystem is still in, in, in the building blocks. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking your call now to say we need to see more uh, connections between the government, the SMEs, the large corporations, the multinationals, and uh, the private sector to connect that ecosystem all together. Uh, my next question would be to, uh, uh, to uh, Ms. Rula, Rula Zarur. Rula is the CEO of, of Real Ventures. Rula have been um, uh, globetrotting with different positions across you know, North America, South America, uh, shaping different organizations. And she, she's leading the role of CEO at Real Ventures that is uh, pioneering in terms of supporting the Montreal ecosystem. Um, Rula, you work at, at Real Ventures with uh, LPs, funds of funds, and you've uh, established Founder Fuel. Uh, you've supported the Osmo Foundation start. Uh, can you tell us more about the Montreal landscape and how you believe this ecosystem is growing, attracting foreign local talents? We know that Canada is always attracting you know, talents and, and, and people to Canada, and I'm sure the ecosystem requires that as well. Uh, and how do you think uh, a Lebanese startup that has a product market fit could benefit from having a, a satellite office or a leg in, in Montreal? Um, thanks, Rami. I'm not going to... Can you hear me? I'm not going to talk a lot about uh, Real Ventures, the VC where I work. Um, we are actually uh, the leading um, in, in Canada and, and have been building ecosystem. I want to talk about Montreal. Uh, Montreal goes under the radar a lot in North America, but um, I want to highlight what a thriving ecosystem it has been, especially in the last decade. 
I'm going to use the pillars you had on your screen, and I'm going to talk about what's happened in Montreal over the last decade and why Montreal is an amazing hub or an, is an amazing starting point for potential startups to North America. It's the window to North America. Um, first of all, the investors. There are many VCs in Montreal whose mission is building ecosystem, not just a financial transaction. Um, we um, also um, believe in working with the entrepreneurs. We don't just give money and wait until they exit. We work with them throughout the journey. So from the time we invest until they evolved and then they're later in the life cycle and they're willing to exit. We give them a lot of support. There's a lot of prog programs for them to help them through their journey. We also, um, what's happening in Quebec, there's a lot of government institution, institutions that are um, mandating eco ecosystem building and, and innovation and talent. There's Investissement Quebec, there's Montréal International, Caisse de Dépôt, and, and many others that are very active in bringing talent and entrepreneurs in Montreal and that are also focusing on, um, on building the ecosystem in Montreal. There's also the uh, educational system. We have some of the top universities in Montreal. We have great talent. Um, the educational system is in Montreal is friendly, is not as costly as the US. Um, we have a lot of focus on AI. Um, there's labs for quantum in different parts of Quebec, and this is where the future is. We also have the informal um, network. Osmo is one of them. Just to give you an example, we had 40 international delegations coming to the Osmo last year uh, from Asia, from Europe, from North America, coming to understand what's happening in Montreal. Um, you know, it's, be, it's, be, it's be, uh, become the AI hub in North America. So there's a lot of interest in the talent we have and in the educational system we have. But most importantly, and that's the part that people are not aware of, is the mindset of the, this talent in Montreal. It's very open, it's very collaborative, it's what we call non-predatory, so it's not taking people and making them work at Amazon or Google or Apple without, without insulting anybody in a specific product. People stay in their academic um, life and dedicate time to the practical, to the applied part of AI to help companies develop solutions. So it's, it's a model that is very specific to, to Montreal, actually, we call it the non-predatory model of AI in Canada. Um, so overall, Montreal is also multicultural, diverse, really easy city to live in, and beside the cold. Um, and it's, um, it's the cost of living is very reasonable, and it's open to North America. Immigration is easier than, than south the border. So all this makes Montreal a really amazing hub um, for startups to come and then hopefully expand to the rest of North America. Thank you, Rula. That, that's that's a very interesting. And we, we could see that from the number of visits that have been here, how, how open the startups are uh, and the ecosystem to, to support, you know, uh, uh, startups that are coming from abroad to, to be excited to come and join the ecosystem. Uh, wi with us as well, we have uh, Tufi. Tufi uh, Azar is a PhD candidate uh, uh, with, uh, and he studied mechanical engineering at McGill. And he's a real example of a Lebanese who uh, moved, moved to Canada to do his studies, spinned off a, a, a technology, uh, went back to Lebanon and got funding and support, and now he's juggling between three ecosystems, uh, the, the Montreal one, the Boston one, and, and the Lebanese one. Uh, Tufi, tell us a bit more about that experience. Uh, I think your experience would be a, a great uh, input for academia from Lebanon to tell them about the spin-off potential, about the, the experience of grants and, and government support and institution support in Canada and the VC and the ecosystem in Lebanon and what you're having now in Boston. I think you, you have a, a, an excellent melting pot of experiences that hopefully will get you to, uh, to more success with your startup. Thank you, Rami. Can you hear me, guys? The yeah, thank you a lot, Rami, for this introduction. Um, so the whole story started when I was doing my PhD studies in McGill. Uh, I had met a partner, Dr. Renzo Cecere. We were he was discussing a medical problem, and then we came up with a solution to that problem. 
And the good thing, I'm going to start from Montreal, then I'll go back to, I'm, I'm going to follow the chronology. It'll give you an idea how we go from an idea to a startup using all these different ecosystems. So when we started the project, it was just a pure research project. But McGill has several competitions which allow you to actually raise some funding to do a spin-off, early stage funding. So we won a Dobson Cup, we, 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 raised, we got a bit of money, then we won another engineering award for innovation where we got as well more money to do all these early stage prototypes. We got to a stage where we actually had a proof of concept. Once we've done that, I was now it was a bit more serious. I had to look for seed funding. And that's where I went. I was actually in Lebanon. Uh, I got introduced. Yes, what's the project? Oh, so, <laughs> so what we do we do? So Mayacor is developing a novel way to repair the mitral valve of the heart without the need of open heart surgery. So we go in we re with a catheter, which is inserted in the groin, all the way to the heart valve, where we implant a device which will repair the stop the leakage and which would allow to treat so many different patients that currently cannot undergo the open heart approach simply because they're too old to do open heart surgery. And then we're talking about tens and tens of thousands of patients that currently do not have, cannot undergo the open heart procedure. So, <laughs> so coming back, I, wa I went to, I was on, uh, in Lebanon, I met Maroon. He introduced me to the ecosystem. He told me, you know, you can meet uh, several different uh, players. Then I met MEVP, which is another fund as well. And then Nicola joined. And then uh, through IM Capital and uh, SME. So we built a, a syndicate of seed investors. Finishing of that, we, the condition was you need to have a, an office in Beirut. Why? Because this is 331 money. And the money has to be spent on Lebanese talent and Lebanese jobs. And that's what we did. We built a small team of engineers in Lebanon. And so, so how do we do a medical device in Lebanon, a class three medical device? It's very, in our case, what we did is we separated the task. So Lebanon would handle all the design of the product. So CADing, 3D software, and all of this, if you want the design aspect. And that's where Boston comes in. All the manufacturing, all the experimental testing will be done in Boston, and as well in McGill, Montreal. And so initially, so the, the, the ratio of work, whereas initially in Lebanon, more, more often I was spending more time in Lebanon, and now it's shifting a bit more to Boston. We still have the team in Lebanon, and uh, that's Cosomo Somodo, the whole idea. And uh, uh, yeah, so, so where are we right now? So we right now we're developing our prototypes for animal testing. So we're going to do animals in Boston as well, uh, which would allow us to go for Series A financing which would happen in a few months, uh, hopefully. And uh, I, I mean, it's a, it's a great, so the, the strength of Lebanon. Uh, there is a very, very good engineers in Lebanon, but which have a bit lack of, if you want to call it, uh, uh, I, where, where they don't know really where they, where they can Im implement this talent. Most of them coming out of AUB, LAU, they, they end up going in consulting, this is not really, I mean, uh, it's a bit boring, I'll be honest. So they want, you want to have, you want to be able to tell these guys, we have a lot of ideas in the world, worldwide ideas. You are able to do them. You just need a bit of guidance. And that's, that's the, uh, the whole point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, Tofi, that's inspiring. I hope, I hope the message would, uh, would, uh, would resonate with the, with the young Lebanese here that are studying maybe in Canada and will follow your footsteps as well. And maybe we can portray that down to Lebanon as well to the students there. Uh, that's great. Uh, Shadi, Shadi, you're, you're the, the vice president and the CIO of Desjardins Group. Uh, Desjardins have been very actively involved in the ecosystem, uh, uh, leading, leading the way, supporting several incubators. You have your own accelerator for FinTech. Um, uh, so, uh, and you have been personally very, very much uh, active in the, in the strategic digital strategy in, in the company at the government level and so, so much. So tell us a bit more about, about the role of Desjardins in such an ecosystem transformation, uh, about your views, about the potential of, of Montreal being, being a, a hub for, for international startups to come in and, and grow. And what would be your advice for the Lebanese ecosystem to, uh, to grow as well, please? 
Sure, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you everybody for the invitation. Thanks to the minister and thanks to the ambassador for the invitation. Listen, uh, what I'd like to do is maybe three things. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Desjardins because even here, most people don't know about Desjardins. So welcome to Montreal. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the landscape. I'm going to add a little bit to what Rula said. And then if I may, I'm going to send a couple of messages out to anybody in Montreal or in Lebanon thinking about a startup. Uh, so Desjardins, very quickly, is a $300 billion bank in terms of assets. And we have 7 million customers across Canada. We're one of the smallest banks in Canada, but we spend $1.5 billion on technology every year, just on technology. So when we're talking about startups, you see how critical it is in our supply chain. So that's the first thing I, I would tell you. And over the last seven years, by the way, we've been already starting to work on the land, uh, landscape. Most people think big banks and small startups are competitors. We do not see it that way at all, actually. We see much more an opportunity to partner because there is no competition today fortunately, unfortunately, between small and large. Small have agility. We have the customers, bring them together, you, ha you create value. So over the last five, seven years, we have several tech startups that are already in our business. We've worked with French startups. That went so well that SAP bought them, so we're not working with them anymore. We work with American startups. And we've actually helped some of our startups locally here. I have to say I have not worked with a Lebanese startup yet, so I'm looking forward to doing that. I work with a lot of Lebanese people in the other startups, but it would be great to have a little bit more Lebanese startups. So the ecosystem is full, it's ready, it has a lot of capacity. Just if I was to add to Rula, like in Lebanon, I'd like us to see us more here in Montreal work much more together. Everybody is rowing hard, but not in the same direction in my opinion. On Montreal, by the way, Montreal has become already one of the top cities in the world. I don't say that because I live here. It's already one of the top cities in the world in terms of the energy around this. If you think about AI, if you think about fintechs, if you think about AssureTechs, if you think about many spaces, uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Samsung, uh, I can keep going, have all opened offices in this city. My biggest competitor for talent is not the local bank. It's Morgan Stanley, who's, op who's brought in 3,000 people in Montreal. So Montreal has become a critical mass for talent and capability in this space. And I think it would be great to find a way to create convergence between the two. Now let's talk about my message to uh, startups. And I'm going to tell you what I tell people every, every week or two, because I meet startups every week or two. There are a ton of ideas in this world, and there's a lot of money. Money and ideas are not a problem anymore. Everybody has a great idea to change the world, and there's Honestly, there's too much money to invest right now. So much money that we're, people are putting money in the wrong businesses today. The two biggest criteria that we're missing is execution rigor. I think you mentioned it a little bit. We need to see people and startups that have the capacity to execute, even if they're surrounded really well. And the last but not least thing is talent. And I agree with you. I saw a lot of talent in Lebanon. Let's find a way to connect it a little bit further. I would say those are the two biggest criteria, and I would close with this. If you come to me and Desjardins, we have about 100 to 200 million that we spend, a fund that's going into these businesses. If you come to us and talk to us about your exit strategy and how you're gonna maximize your business plan, we're pretty much not going to be interested. If you come to us and talk about how you're gonna create positive social impact with your startup and make money, then you're gonna get our attention. I would, I would encourage everybody to just think about not falling into that trap of value generation first and having a positive impact on, on the world second. I would suggest we should flip that. Thank you. I, would, I just wanna reiterate uh, Shadi's message because Desjardins is also an investor in real. Fully, fully agree, and the same with us. If you're coming to tell us how you're gonna exit and make money upon exit, we're not interested. We wanna know how you're gonna change the world, how your technology is gonna disrupt a business model or, or a way of doing things, and how you're gonna contribute to the ecosystem and the social impact. So fully supportive of the approach. That, that's excellent. I think that's, that's important for the sustainability of, of any ecosystem. Uh, for for the the value of, of a community, I think if 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 
LPs or, 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 uh, or uh, VCs are looking into, into that as value creation in terms of social impact. I think that's, that's crucial for, for a long-term uh, relationship and growth for, for an ecosystem. Shadi, thank you very much. I think, I think your input was, was, uh, uh, was right on, and I hope the startup uh, community here would, would listen to that manage. Uh, you, you and Maroon connected as well on, on the execution. Maroon mentioned that executing uh, is a core component. We have excellent startups. We want to make sure that they are uh, uh, really focused on making the impact and growing at the international. Uh, we move now to uh, Dr. Nicola Ruhana. Nicola, uh, Nicola you're, you're the chairman and the general manager of IM Capital. IM Capital was initiated in 2014-2015 uh, through uh, USAID funding and Beritech. And uh, your role with IM Capital is to fill a gap and improve the investment landscape uh, in Lebanon. Tell us a bit more about the IM Capital uh, role and uh, what do you do? I know you have multiple uh, programs, and one of them is exciting, which is, which is the, the angel investor uh, side. So maybe we can put a bit more focus on that as well. Yes, <laughs> sure. Uh, just to break the ice, let's try in Arabic. It's very English oriented. <laughs> Sorry, small joke. I don't have the millions. I just managed a $20 million fund. So, like, you know, like the, the small outlier here. But anyway, we, 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 we think ourselves, uh, we did very well for the last uh, few years. We really contributed to several uh, building blocks of the uh, landscape that was uh, mentioned by Maroon earlier. And the reason for that, we have several blocks, is that I like what you said about the VC's mandate to build an ecosystem. So that's what we've been trying to do for the last three, four years. So we, uh, apart the funding that we, we did, we try to fill gaps, uh, and gaps in terms of programs, or even funding gaps, uh, or, or equity gaps, or early stage. For, so our mandate in IM Capital, when we started in 2015, is to really to help er, uh, access to early stage funding. And as Marut mentioned, he showed the 331 and BDL 331 funds. I mean, we're not funded under Circular 331, so we're outside uh, this, this circle. And I remember one entrepreneur, when we started the program, he came to me and said, I mean, yes, there are millions from the 331. It's like I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a lifeboat surrounded by salt water without a, a drop to drink. You know, so all of these money is uh, across around this entrepreneur and he doesn't have access to it really because he's still at the really early stage. I mean, if you listen to the pitches this morning, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there are a lot, there's a lot to go uh, to work with them before they come to apply to, uh, I mean, Desjardins obviously or, or uh, Real Ventures. So this is where we come in and try to, you know, fill, fill this gap at the, at the early stage. And so we did it, and, and we, we tried to, so we have small tickets, smaller tickets, obviously, so within the, uh, as, as, as mentioned, and we, we do it in several sectors, not just tech. So uh, if, if you look around, some of our portfolio is in the pavilion here. Uh, Mayacore is one of them, so it's Biomed. Uh, there is Mayacore, which is the uh, designer marketplace. Uh, Taka, Taka, which is the wheat fee breakery. So it shows you that we really look at, at sectors that are outside the typical VCs that we find in Lebanon. So that's why we, we are very happy and, and proud that we really uh, fill, fill blocks. We've co-created the first seed accelerator, uh, which is called Speed at DDD, which is uh, one way of creating a, a deal flow for, um, for, the, for the funds. We uh, again created a coaching program with Stanford. We did the mentorship network as well, a uh, mentorship platform with, uh, with MIT. So we have a network of mentors that help uh, the entrepreneurs. And we also filled a gap, missing gap, which is the angel part. Uh, so if in any ecosystem, there is a vibrant angel, business angel uh, community of private investors that invest individually one-on-one -on -one, uh, with early stage where it's very risky and tickets are, are low and they come in not just with the money, but they help with, the, uh, with their expertise, their network. So we created a, a new program to build capacity for uh, business angels in, in Lebanon, democratizing access to business angels. So for example, anyone that wants, because there is this vibrant ecosystem and there is this, all this money around, so people are now interested to look at, at startups and to help them and to invest in them individually because you know, there is these startups coming up and there is a vibe and there is a hype now and it's, it's, uh, it's cool to, to look at startups and to, to invest in them. But they don't, how, they don't know how, they don't know, they don't know how to do it. Uh, it takes a lot of money to build a portfolio. Uh, they don't have ex access to qualified deal flow. They don't know how to follow up, due diligence, etc. So we created a program 
uh, for capacity building for novice investors that want to come in individually to, uh, to invest. And we've lowered the ticket uh, to, to entry for around uh, $20,000 individually to go through this uh, program and actually invest, look at qualified uh, portfolio, qualified deals, build a portfolio of uh, three to four startups over the course of the program, and then learn how to do due diligence and evaluation and deal terms and, uh, and what have you. Now, um, before I finish, and uh, maybe we'll do that in the, the next round, is that we're trying to do the same to attract the diaspora in this program be because it's a structured way of the diaspora for the diaspora to contribute back to, uh, to Lebanon uh, by a methodology that is well, well proven. So we have three groups. We manage three groups in Lebanon. The fourth one will start in September. One of, one of the three groups is women-only uh, women only angel group that invest in women-led startups. This morning we were talking about uh, gender equality. I mean, uh, over the three groups, we've, uh, we have 72 angels that graduated through the th three groups. More than 60% are women because of this women only uh, uh, group that raised the, <laughs> the, the, the equation. Well, I, I'll, I'll stop to that. Thank you so much, Nicola. <laughs> so so as, as you mentioned, uh, even though there is Circle CC1 funding, there's, there's a need for multiple mechanisms uh, to support the ecosystem. The, the angel investment program is one of them. Investing in non-necessary tech-related startup but scalable business is also another area of interest for Lebanon. And we have some good examples, including Taka uh, uh, with, the, with the team. And uh, we spoke about that uh, yesterday as well with the food diplomacy. Um, and I think it would be great to, to learn more maybe about, about the Cedars program and it, its potential to grow uh, within, within uh, the diaspora. And, and I will reach out to that in a bit later. Uh, Philippe, Philippe Ziede, Mr. Philippe Ziede is, is uh, a successful businessman from, from the US. Philippe, you've been involved with the LDE. You've been involved in, in the diaspora, connecting Lebanon to the States and, and back. Um, you recently created uh, an initiative called the US Lab Tech Hub aiming to create a regulated environment that enables, uh, from one hand, Lebanon's creative use to working with international companies without departing the country, and from the other side, uh, to sustain startups companies and allowing them to import export, export know-how and data from the US. Uh, tell us a bit more about this initiative and how you see that growing in terms of support. Uh, first of all, let me tell you where it started. Uh, we are not a technology company. We are real estate developers, but we saw the need of uh, implementing technology in our projects. And wh when I say technology, I'm not talking about smart home systems, right? We're talking about the next generation, the augmented era that we're, you know, at the dawn of entering here. In the next 20 years, uh, where, where uh, natural human capabilities are being augmented through computational systems that will help you think, and through robotic systems that will help you make, and through digital uh, nervous system that will connect you to the world far beyond your natural senses. And that's what we wanted to implement into the real estate development. As, as you've seen half an hour ago, they, they were talking about how, how far real estate is from technology. This is how we started. So uh, we wanted to connect minds so we can create new product and create the future. And by doing so, uh, we have partnerships. We are developing the first Tesla community in the world now with Tesla in partnership with Tesla. We are developing the first Airbnb hotel in partnership with Airbnb, co-launching, co-branding. Under these umbrellas, we're developing a lot of technologies. And, and we wanted to reach out to the Lebanese community to help these startups to give them what they're missing. We talked about everything except the opportunity, the true opportunity for these talented young Lebanese to put them on the table with these big companies. And that's what we're trying to do. So for example, if we take the Tesla concept, which is a Tesla home, you, you drive this car, you should live this lifestyle in this home. Uh, we, we are working with Sensio Air, it's a Lebanese startup that will identify uh, pollen, pollutants, uh, moles in the air. So if you are in the air and then you have a watery eyes or any kind of allergy, you tell the home, hey, I'm having a watery eyes. And then the house will detect in the air what are the bacteria that are causing the watery eyes and it will refiltrate the air and will eliminate the allergy. So your home becomes the, the most comfortable place for you to live. So as you live in this house through artificial intelligence, the home will get to know you more. 
and now it becomes the most comfortable place for you to live. So this is an example of what we're trying to do, this exchange between the US and Lebanon uh, through the Airbnb uh, hotel concept. Uh, again, it is, it's uh, the next generation, it's an unmanned hotel that's gonna be planted all over the world that's, that solves Airbnb's problem of not being consistent. You know, you stay in one city, you go to another city, you're not gonna get the same service, right? <laughs> and then there's challenges of zoning and then cities coming down on, on legalities of Airbnb and, and, and being able to, to do that short-term stay. Uh, so we're resolving that through technology, uh, cashless stay, fingerprint, face recognition, all of that through the technology, and that is being de developed also in partnership with Airbnb, with the Lebanese startup. So this is really the initiative of what we're trying to do uh, to bring to Lebanon, that bridge, a direct bridge between the US, international company, and Lebanese engineers. And I cannot tell you the excitement for these Lebanese when they know they're gonna sit on the table with Tesla engineers, and they're gonna sit with Airbnb and discuss, give them their ideas and listening to them and seeing their you know, the reaction on their face is like, oh, they like it, they want to do it, let's develop it. And, and they th will mentor them through that process. So, so that, that, that's amazing. The, the fact that uh, we're able to connect, you know, the talent, the, the, the technology, the development that has been made, and looking at different applications through, you know, cutting edge technologies or companies that are looking to, to change the world in the next 10 to 20 years is, is definitely an important thing. Uh, Will that initiative grow? Will we see more of a physical or, or a personal, a person in Lebanon maybe working on that deal flow more? more? Uh, I know that it's, it started this year, so, or, or early last year, I'm not, I'm not sure, but w will we see a, a development in terms of structure to attract more or advise more the Lebanese on, on, on the, the approach or it's handpicked by, uh, uh, by research? Now it, it is, okay, the concept is for US Lebanon Tech Hub to be a platform like other companies like us to come and join. Okay. We are into the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. We want other in, uh, industries to join us, mm -hmm. US companies uh, that will come and do exactly what we do because what we do is we're not only giving the opportunity, we're giving them the funding. When we have a project like that, it's funded. Part of the technology is, is part of the funding of the project. So we're not just giving them the opportunity and the platform, we're giving them the money to, 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 to create uh, and and uh, it is self-funded. Now we're reaching out to universities. We have uh, discussions on how we can include talent from the universities so we can give them, we, we develop uh, intensive courses so they come to our offices in Lebanon. Uh, we pay them transportation and fees. They come in, they take these courses mm -hmm. that are directly, uh, uh, that have to do with our projects, the, the, all the technologies that we are developing and then we, we handpick these uh, talent and students, and we engage them in the projects, we pay their tuitions, and then we help them and give them the opportunity. But yes, we want to give that model to other institutions to join the platform. Great, great. Uh, I, think, I think we've got a good exposure of the different activities that are happening on both sides of the pond. Um, I would give Nicola maybe a minute to talk more about your CEDARS initiative. And then I would like to open the floor for a uh, few questions before we, we close the panel so that uh, we'll hear from the audience their questions, their concerns, and the, the, the opportunities that they might see from this, this conversation. Yeah, yeah thank, you, thank you, Ramli. So, so the reason uh, really I'm here is that uh, it's because of uh, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Ziad whom I've met like one year, one year ago. And uh, it so happens, you know, for the heck, Russell, he, he came to, he was present at the launching of Cedars in Lebanon like two, three years ago. And it resonated to him. And then I often come here because my son is at McGill, so he knew and he said we had went to have coffee on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. somewhere in Bahri Pouen <laughs> before I took my flight, <laughs> just to talk about how we can do Cedars uh, of Canada. Uh, and, and so, so voila, so he, he, here it goes. So obviously there is a vibrant Lebanese diaspora entrepreneurial spirit uh, in Montreal. I mean, uh, there are lots of startups, Lebanese-led startups that are born from, uh, from Montreal at least. Uh, 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 one of them could is, is Meacor, for example, and there are others since you saw the, the pictures today. So it's, it's really vibrant. Uh, on the other hand, there are lots of uh, Lebanese executives in the diaspora as well that are interested to, to help out 
take uh, on an individual basis. So take Shadi, for example, where individually he wants to help out because he's from the diaspora, he's Lebanese, and he's sensitive to the startup, and he wants to help out at really the early stage before these guys come and pitch to Real Ventures or to Desjardins, you know, and, and hundreds of millions. So how he wants to do it? I mean, he doesn't have, maybe, maybe he has the know-how, but doesn't have the time maybe, nor, nor the, the time to access qualified deal flow, et cetera, or, uh, you know, or even maybe the, 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 uh, the money, enough money to carry a portfolio because he has to de-risk his investments. So the program is that we take a group of, of uh, investors, like up to 20 and 30, and we tell them, okay, your individual tickets is like uh, 20K or 30K. You pull them together in a, in a pool and we take you through investment and education track over like six to eight months where every six weeks you get access to a deal flow. I mean, the, the you look at pitches that are qualified pitches, prepared uh, pitches, and there is a moderation where we take you through how to invest, you know, green light, red lights, what questions to ask, etc. And there is a voting mechanism to do due diligence or not following this, uh, this, uh, this pitch. And then there is an executive summary and then there's another vote where you actually decide to invest as a group or not. So, so this is democratizing a bit access to uh, angel investing on an individual basis. So I'm sure there are in this room lots of uh, interested uh, people on, on the private side that want to uh, give back both, I mean, time and, uh, of course, money. Uh, and time meaning helping uh, in coaching and helping the entrepreneur in their journey as well. Because angels normally have two wings. One is the money and one is the, uh, the help and the, 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 the mentorship and the advice that they can give and access to uh, their, their network. So those that are interested in this program that uh, we want to really actively launch in, uh, uh, in Montreal, hopefully. Uh, so there you can come and we can talk after this session. Or tomorrow morning at 11, at, uh, sponsored by the Bank National du Canada, we have an info session, especially targeted for, uh, so there will be lots of, uh, so an info session where there's more information that we can give out for uh, individuals that are interested in this uh, program. So we will be waiting for you actively to participate in this program to really give back, I mean, to the uh, local ecosystem. And, and, and mind you, come in, uh, we would maybe have 50% of the money that raised by this pool of investors maybe invest back in, in Lebanon uh, for, for that matter because maybe they want to give back in a structured way and invest in Lebanese startup from, from Lebanon. So it will be part 50% locally, let's say, and 50% outside uh, Lebanon. And hopefully, hopefully, uh, <laughs> just my left pitch, hopefully if you go on the LDE website, the LDE.com, uh, and you see the, the project and the initiatives, there's one that's called uh, Lebanon Cedars, or Cedars of Diaspora Cedars. I would like to have Diaspora Cedars as an S-E-E-D-R-S instead of the S-E-E-D-R-S. Uh, so this is, let, let's, let's aim to, 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 to arrive to this, uh, uh, to this target. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, I will open the floor to a couple of questions to the audience. Do we have anybody who want to ask a question for the panelists, please? So, we call it ecosystem because uh, it has a lot of opportunities. Some of them will live and some other opportunity will die. I think the cleverness is like to choose an opportunity that uh, we can predict to live for a long time. So can you provide us an insight how we can select the opportunities that will live and will be have uh, of great value? And I keep fey. Pass. Keep fey, Anna. I'll answer from a VC perspective. Um, when you're an early stage company, um, the, the the risk is high for success. Uh, sorry, the risk. Yeah, th there's a big risk for success. When we invest in in early stage companies, we believe in the idea. We believe in the team but we also realize the risk factor. And there's a, there's a law called the power law model that says a lot of companies will, not a lot, but a percentage of companies will, will cease to, to exist. Some will break even, and some will bring 10 or multiplier or more. So the whole portfolio will end up making money. This is a VC perspective. So we don't bet on, when we go into an investment is because we believe in it, and we believe it's gonna win. 
but unfortunately, not every investment is gonna is gonna make it. But we 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 bet for the total. The money you're given is nurturing the ecosystem, and you you hope that the whole portfolio make money. So that's from a financial transaction, from an ecosystem building. Um, by giving this company these companies a chance, and by working with them and connecting them and putting them through accelerators and providing programs, you've contributed to the ecosystem through knowledge, because knowledge is the biggest, uh, the biggest asset here. And you've connected, you've, you've grown the network, you've connected people through the right networks, and so on. So that's how you, you nurture the ecosystem and you continue to build on it. Does that answer your question? Thank you so much. And thank you to, sorry, we're, we're no longer gonna be taking questions. I have, I have the microphone here, Rami. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to our moderator, Rami Bujaude, and to our panelists. <laughs> Can we get a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you. Group selfie. Thank you. Actually, also. So. Again, just to give you a quick brief, so the teams were for 36 hours uh, straight, no uh, overnight and so on. And today we had a panel, so that we had five judges judge the top uh, three. And these top three teams will win Alpha Cash prizes. So without further talking, um, I'll call the first team, um, Reach Out, Democratizing Access to Mental Health, so, oh yeah, sure. Uh, hi everyone. Mr. Mambera, I'm going to make a small announcement. I have another one to make right now. And this is a direct result of uh, today's event uh, and collaboration between Lebanon and Canada and ab about the creation of this corridor of startups between the uh, Canadian companies and the Lebanese one. Uh, as a discussion with my friend, uh, Ibrahim Jadaoun, who is the CPO of TELUS. We've decided together that he will double the amount we have on the check. So JC, uh, so the amount we have, or we'll be distributing as, uh, as Alpha today, the same amount will be put on by, uh, by Ibrahim and TELUS uh, later on. So the, so the 5,000 will become 10, the three and a half will become seven, and two and a half will become five. So, uh, this is an immediate positive uh, result of this uh, Canadian-Lebanese uh, dialogue, let's put it this way. Thank you. So reach out. Please come on stage. So this team wins $5,000 as a search prize. So the prize is. We cannot distribute the checks without your uh, presence, Malik. No. All right. All right. So next team, second place. Um, helping donations and donators. So give to give, please come up on stage. The prize is $7,000.
And now, for the big prize, $10,000. Oh, that, that needs a big round of applause, right? All right, so $10,000 goes to Asteria. Yeah, you guessed it. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim Jedron, the CEO of TELUS, to come on stage. Sorry. I would like to call Mr. Ibrahim Jedron to come up on stage. an announcement to all of the contestants. Yes, for every one of the group, nobody would leave this conference without feeling that they want something. So I would like to offer $5,000 for each of the group that participated. Can we get all of the groups up on stage? Can we get all of the groups? We're going to take a group photo. بعد مارون شماس حابب يقول شيء وينه مارون بعد في عندنا مارون بس في عنده كمان بده يضيف شيء تفضل سو بول بول از ذا مانجينج بارتنر اوف بيري تك فون 2 اند هي هاز اولسو ان اناونسمنت تو دو هيلو اوكي ليت مي جست هاي وي ويل Beritech Fund 2 will match for the three winners the prizes. So the first and the second and the third ones will have their prizes doubled. <laughs> a, a, a token of our commitment to the bridges between Lebanon and the rest of the world.
Okay, guys. Uh, and Demko, I was, I was impressed with all the teams, but at the same time, Al Asariya, uh, Smart Phoenix, which is part of Endevco Group, would love to implement for you, uh, if you want, uh, we can implement for you this thing. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Yes. For free. For free, basically. Let's see how much. Let's see how much it is. We can do it. Yeah. If you don't start, if we. If you are focused and you're working hard, yes. Okay, after we finished, we finished. For three years, we finished. No, after we finished, but there is... It says, yes. After we finished, Dr. Sfair also wants to say something. Double the amount. Bank Beirut will double the amount. Another 5,000. Thank you so much. Bad, do you want announcement? Bad, do you want announcement? Yes. Come on, after we finish. I'm sure there are people who want to add, there's no problem. I'll take them. But we have a role, I'll tell you. نحن ديسبورا اي دي which is a platform to engage diaspora for socio-economic development in Lebanon في two ideas that fit perfectly our strategy لهن MedLab which is to start engaging the medical tourism in Lebanon and there's another one which is the augmented reality for augmented reality tourism so we will be providing you an incubation program to develop the whole uh, your idea, basically, from a development perspective, uh, totally, free of charge. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Welcome to Lebanon. This is Lebanon. <laughs> okay. I would like to welcome, please, uh, Mr. Paul Shukralla, Chairman and uh, CEO of Veritech Fund Management, Dr. Brahim Jadon, CTO of uh, TELUS, Mr. Marwan Hayek, CEO of Alpha Group. Mr. Namad Frem, Member of Parliament and CEO of Indefco Group. Mr. Rabia Nassar, CEO of founder of Scripter.io. I do And Mr. Sidri, Director of Entrepreneurship at Montreal International. Please come on in, please have a seat. Hello, everyone. From John? Can you hear me? No? Can we raise the, the voice in the back? Because there's a lot of noise. If you can ask everybody to have a seat, we're going to start the panel. We're going to be quick, but we're going to keep you entertained and teach you a lot about the ecosystem. So please bear with us. OK. OK. So the, the first panel we had, the first panel we had, talked about bridging ecosystem. We've had players in the ecosystem that are supporting entrepreneurs uh, directly. On this panel, we have more uh, the private sector, the support organization, and an entrepreneur. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? OK. So on this panel, we have uh, different players that, ha that are playing an active role in supporting entrepreneurs. Uh, we will tackle the role of telecom companies uh, industry groups that support the digital transformation in both economies, in Lebanon and in Canada, and the U.S., the role that startups can play to address these ch ch challenges and changes in the sector, and what those companies are doing to support the transformation, uh, the transformation of the economies. Montreal, being the AI capital, has created a special program within its promotional agency to attract top talent with Montreal International and funds to Greater Montreal, and we will hear about this mission and what the city can offer to top talent. Uh, the objective of Lebanese VCs is to support the best startups get into international markets. We will hear about that experience with Mr. Paul Shukralla. 
the aspirations and objectives, and we will end up with a startup from Lebanon with Mr. Rabia Nassar that have its market in North America and it, its penetration challenges and successes growing in these markets. We'll start first with uh, Paul, Paul Shukrallah. Uh, Paul, in a nascent ecosystem like Lebanon, the role of VCs is more than just investing in startups. You have a much bigger role, and it's nurturing relationships, connecting them to opportunities, to mentors, and to markets. Can you tell us more about such practices and how this can improve success and growth in such ecosystems? First of all, thank you for having me. Alisson. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here, and actually, a part of the answer to this question lies with the fact that we are here. So it's part of what we want to do for our startups, connect them to the world and try to help them in growing beyond Lebanon in their markets. So of course, um, the same way people would start a business in the first few days when you start a business, you would be doing everything from accounting to sales to managing the premises and everything else. The ecosystem in Lebanon is still a baby. And in this ecosystem, Beritech and others, Beritech being the oldest one, but Beritech and others have been doing a lot of things. That we've been hosting the companies, we've been mentoring the companies, we've been helping the companies think about financing, we've been providing financing when we could, and we've been seeking financing ourselves from the European unions and others to try to bring this thing about. Um, it has been a long slog. I mean, we've been working, as you know, Rami, for 18 years on that, and not all of us, of course, but it's, it's been, I mean, we've part of the things that are transforming Lebanon. We're part of the things that are rejuvenating this, this uh, economy. And in a way, whatever we can do, we will do. Of course, if it's a very young company, we'll help it in many, in a different way from if it's a, an older company. Some of, the older, some of the more mature companies in our portfolio are well established. They have uh, accounting, they have sales, they have everything else. But some of the very young companies, and because we can invest in early, early stage companies as well, need a lot of support. We try to provide all of that. Thank you, Paul. Uh, the next question is uh, to Dr. Brahim Jadon. Dr. Brahim, uh, the telecom industry is constantly changing uh, and taking an active role in connecting the world. Tell us how TELUS is supporting and embracing startups and innovation in tech, and how open is Canada uh, in terms of tech companies to attract worldwide innovations? Uh, thank you, Rami. Good, uh, well, good morning, everyone. I think one of the key things is the world is a small global village, so saying we're open or closed, if we're closed, we're all going to die and go hungry. So we are open to innovations. There's nothing really called local versus global. So the Lebanon Canada corridor is really great. Uh, what, what we're doing is we do have the regular ventures arm, so there's a small amount of money, like $100 million or so, and acquisitions. But the bulk of what we're doing is we're creating what we call the living lab. So one of the things I noticed with Biotech did was amazing was all these great applications and great engineering work, the go-to market piece was missing. The most important thing a startup can have is a client. So I think we're trying to create an ecosystem which is truly global in nature for TELUS as clients, not just as a network, but also as health provider, for people to try their applications, to be able to sell them and pursue them. So money is one angle. You talked about the angel. Uh, I love the notion on the last panel on the angel with the two wings. I think our angel has three wings, money, <laughs> TLC, and a client, channel to market. Hello. Great. Nice. So, so you're totally right. Uh, the, a living lab approach to, 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 to the startups, giving them a community to test with, experiment, a platform like, like uh, the, telecom, the telecom companies has would definitely help, um, help uh, this panel. Uh, with that, we move to Marwan. Marwan, you're, you're leading, you're leading uh, Alpha in Lebanon, uh, one of the leading and the leading uh, telecom in, in Lebanon. And you've seen the ecosystem growing. I've seen, I think over the last three years, you've seen a lot of things happening. And the support of telcos can help accelerate uh, market fund and help them test uh, those solutions. Can you tell us more about the, the role of Alpha in supporting the startups in the ecosystem and how you see the future for such start startups evolving? Thank you, Rami. Uh, first of all, I guess uh, 
Uh, as a telco operator in Lebanon, uh, our main duty and uh, responsibility is to avail infrastructure to the, to the, uh, to the population and to everyone uh, in the country, including the ecosystem and the startups. So by doing so, we are enabling uh, them to unleash their potential to come up with uh, whatever idea they had in mind and to implement it uh, the right way and in an efficient way. So this is mainly how we are contributing uh, uh, in, in Lebanon uh, by uh, making this digital revolution and transi transition uh, happen uh, as soon as possible and without further delays and in, 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 in the right way. Um, at Alpha, we, we do understand uh, startups and uh, their needs and their probably their failures. And as, as per a recent study conducted in Lebanon, there are many reasons for, for failing as a startup or um, as an entrepreneur. But the top three are the first one is the coming up with an idea which is irrelevant to the market where we're, you're operating. So this is the number one failure reason uh, in Lebanon. Number two is running out of cash. Funds are available, uh, but spending it without delivering is a major uh, concern for investors. And number three, not having the right team or the right talents. Uh, the hype we have seen, just seen with the three uh, startups or uh, entrepreneurs that won the prizes shows how much uh, investment or funding you can get provided you have the right idea and the relevant idea. So this, uh, we can use it as an example to, to say that uh, as operator in, in Lebanon, we have enough uh, cash and uh, deep pockets to help startups. On the, on the financial side, provided that the idea is relevant to our operations and to our, uh, our market. Uh, we have recently created the MIC Venture, which is a, a $48 million fund uh, shared between Alpha and the other operator under the uh, patronage and guidance of the Ministry of Telecommunication. So this, this fund is going to help all startups uh, uh, targeting uh, ideas in the, in the technology and mainly on the mobile side. Uh, we have a certain need as, as telco operator today for startups from various uh, dimensions and angles. First, we need to grow our revenues, our core revenues as a mobile operator. And here we can rely on uh, the proposition and the value proposition of, of, of uh, startups to uh, grow this, uh, this, this segment and this revenue. We also need to look for uh, new revenue streams. And this is where the innovation of startups can play a role for us really to uh, get new ideas in place, implement it the right way, and, and uh, create new revenue streams. We also have a point or a major concern, which is on our cost structure. We need to lower our OPEX and uh, operational uh, expenses. And here we can also benefit and learn from the, uh, the startups uh, using their business models, which is very lean and efficient in terms of organization. And we can create certain synergies between them and, and us as uh, telco operators. Uh, we have also advantages as mobile operator and uh, presence across the country for the startups to really benefit from. Uh, the sales and distribution network that we have is very relevant and very, uh, very powerful, so they can have an immediate reach uh, to our 2 million plus customers around, the, around Lebanon. Uh, we have a, a strong network of uh, retails and retail points that they can, they can use as well. Uh, we have a base of around 2 plus million subscribers, which is uh, a heaven for any startup uh, to think of, you know, they, they can have access immediately to our base uh, to, to test their ideas and see if it makes sense to have them or if people will really uh, adopt these, uh, these ideas or not. So we have a lot, of, a lot of synergies that can be created between these startups and the mobile operators and Alpha specifically, and we really count on the, on the MIG Ventures Fund to, to make this bridge between the two organizations. We have enough financial and physical assets in place for the startups to benefit from and really to, to leverage and to uh, shorten their, uh, their time to market uh, and to rely on our infrastructure and to use us simply as a test lab. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think that's, that's, uh, that's highly relevant uh, and I think there's still a lot of potential for startups to tap into that network. Uh, I know that, that you're uh, being more and more involved with student competitions as well in Lebanon Marwan with uh, with the, the new, new uh, program that happened with the Summer of Innovation recently, you supported the, the Startup Scout. So we see that activity taking more place, and I, I, I'm hoping that with the coming year, uh, people will feel more comfortable approaching using the platform and, and testing, and we're more than happy to help facilitate that. I, I may add, if you uh, allow me, Rami, we have heard a lot of uh, uh, you know, statements about talents 
Do we have talents in Lebanon or not? And this goes back to the panel of yesterday about education. Uh, a recent uh, survey conducted in, in Lebanon showed that uh, founders do complain about lack of talents in Lebanon. So this somehow is a bit uh, you know, contradictory. Do we have talents or not? Do we have the right talents in place? It shows that there is a gap between the university education system we have today and the real needs, the practical needs we have on the ground. Probably we have a, a lot of good engineers, but are they capable and really equipped with the right luggage to uh, start a new venture or to be part of a startup? This is a big question mark, and the founders of, of startups in Lebanon are complaining about lack of relevant, I would say relevant talents in, in Lebanon. You, you, and and I, I, do, I, do, uh, I do hear your comments. We've, we've heard that as well. And you know, there are sev several activities that are happening to try to match that talent. And, and one of the things is that we're trying to tap into the diaspora, I think, to try to attract young talent who've experienced different uh, jobs or university uh, degrees from abroad to come back to Lebanon and, and play an active role in those startups as well. Uh, thank you so much. My, my ne qu next question goes to uh, Mr. Namat Frame. Uh, Mr. Namat Frame, you're, you're very active on, on and wears many hats, and recently with the, with the new hat as the, the, the member of parliament for Jbeir and Kisruwain. Um, you're the CEO of one of the leading groups uh, in industry in Lebanon. Uh, you've you've uh, been the, the head of the Lebanese Industrial Association. Uh, tell us a bit more about how you see Indefco uh, transitioning uh, into uh, digital transformation, and that's from the business side of things. And when it comes to the government, I know that you're leading the National Economical Committee. So uh, taking Lebanon to the digital era, taking Lebanon to uh, a more agile uh, economy, I think you have a big, big load on your shoulders. So tell us more about yes. your vision about Indefco and the government. Thank you, uh, Oshi. I'm impressed with uh, where LDE is today, and I want to commend the team of LDE. We were the early birds as Maronite Foundation. Uh, we saw how it evolved, and uh, congratulations for this fantastic evolution. This is a great success story. <laughs> Minister Basil, uh, without your effort, really, uh, and I'm not talking now as a member of a I'm talking about a witness. As a witness, uh, this movement started with an idea. The Maronite Foundation started in our hearts and then on the ground. And then I would say that today, this is a national initiative. LDE is a great national initiative that is, I would say, maybe 2,000 years overdue. It is that much, that much overdue from the time of the Phoenicians. So back to where we are today and your question. In DEFCO Group, uh, it's very interesting when we look at the transformation that we had to do from a smokestack industry, from a heavy basic industry, to a desire to follow, to enter into the technology-based industry. And this transformation was quite interesting. Now, as I look back to it, Strategically, we thought this is the initial condition, how to move from there, and we started to find out, to find like milestones. When I look back today, I think the three milestones that we found are the ERP world, uh, um, the SCADA system, the, the, the automation and drive and SCADA systems, and now the third, which is coming, is the IoT of things, the IoT and the Industrial Revolution 4.0. With the other first two, we embarked on those 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and turned out into a, a new industry of ours in DEFCO Group called Phoenix, where we make, we are now center of excellence in those two things, ERPs and automation and drives. With what's happening today, we are preparing ourselves and we started we started with a new platform called Smart Phoenix to embrace the new movement of IoT. Now, having said this, I did find out, I really considered that uh, the talents in Lebanon, as you said, are so important. I do agree that we are entering a new phase. 
we feel that we are lose, starting to lose this comparative advantage. And it's something alarming, especially that when you see what's happening today at the opening of this uh, year, school year, we feel that we are built on our, our cornerstone is our private schools. The cornerstone of this success, when you see those Lebanese here abroad today, the cornerstone is the private school in Lebanon. And especially today, with what's happening with the new laws that had to increase in a special way the cost of teachers in Lebanon, which is not being able to be matched with the tuitions, I am afraid, we are all afraid, that we might start to have a deterioration in the level of basic education. If this thing is touched, if this cornerstone is shaken, the whole construction will, will be shaken within 15 years. So we have to be vigilant about it. And this is, I'm saying, in front of the minister, in front of the media, we have to pledge as a government, as a whole public money, to support and prevent this thing. Now, back to the third question of yours. The third question of yours, uh, the committee, the economic committee at the parliament, uh, probably this goes back to why I decided to become an MP. Because I felt that we can do that much in the private sector when we do our utmost to create a success stories, toolbox of successes that we can implement in different, different fields using building our building blocks, but constructing them differently to achieve different results. Using all of those tricks, we end up having a limitation. And this limitation is twofold in Lebanon. It is the laws uh, that are needed to create this environment of professionalism, efficiency, and reward for the right people. Second driver, which was, I consider, a major limitation, it is the infrastructure. These are the two touch points. This is where the rubber meets the road between us as private sector and the public sector. Those two points, we all need to work very hard to change the environment. This is why I personally saw and saw in the political team that I'm working with today, especially Minister Basile, a bridgehead a bridgehead for those ideas. We need to go, we need really to feel that we are going, sorry for the term, behind enemy lines as private sector to convert the environment, the environment of the private, of the public sector. This is what, this is the idea, or this is the spirit, and this is the methodology that we want to use at, in our committee. And this is actually what we are doing. The committee today and the, and, the, and the parliament, the economic committee, has a master plan. Has a master plan around those two drivers with milestones. And we are working on them. Our utmost objective would be having a, a package of laws that we are spearheading and monitoring them and seeing where they are because we discovered that one of our major problems is the productivity of the private sector, but most importantly, of the parliament. A law in the parliament can take 15 years of going around, and in the day of the vote on the plenary section, not all the parliamentarians will have the same revision. This is the beauty. Yani we, need, we have to, best, to, to, to instill best practices all around. So this is our first objective of the laws, the package of laws. The second one is to come out or highlight uh, investment projects, public, public investment projects, or public-private investment projects, and infrastructure that have paybacks 
of less than five years or three years for the economy. And you don't know how much there are of those. We can highlight today at least 10 investments, mega investments, with less than five years payback. When you have these kind of investments and you are do not doing them, this is why you don't have growth in the, in the, in the, pub in the public sector, in the, in the economy. So putting those top 10, highlighting those top 10 projects and lobbying for them, because you know you are calling this committee the economic committee. But this is not the, the name, the legal term, the legal name of this committee is not the economic committee. It's called economic industry and, uh, and, and trade. But there is a fourth component, which is the most important, planning. So this is the planning committee. And imagine how much we are not planning that we forgot the name of the committee. So this is our game plan. And we are going to hopefully achieve results with uh, the thrust, the vector, the driver, the power of a team of 29 parliamentarians that will be focusing energy on one point at a time. Because probably the most beautiful uh, success factor is a word that starts with F. It's not what you thought, it's focus, okay? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Znamad, and I just, uh, just want to go back to the, to the private school being the cornerstone of our education. Say again? The private schools or the, the private uh, education system being the cornerstone of our education system. And I just want to leave the private school. And this is what I want to do in Polytechnique. The private school? No, I don't know. I want to leave the private school all the way to the baccalaureate. Ah, okay, come on. And then the Polytechnique. I don't want to leave the public sector like education and who assess the problem. We're talking about talent here. No, no, okay. yeah, yeah, let me tell you, don't misunderstand me that I'm underestimating the, uh, the public sector. Well, she, we are working very hard to be next to the public, to public school in, Lab in, in, the middle, in, in Kisruen. Actually, we have a, an NGO only focused on helping the public schools. But I consider that the, pub, the private school and the public school, but basically the private school created this competition 50 years ago or 80 years ago to elevate our public school. So, Anna, today the public school in Lebanon, today what we are seeing today, uh, is again in the transformation, but um, we are not proud of the result of all of its performance. We, wa we wanted to make it stronger. Laanno, this competition, but it's not competition, but I would say this, this, uh, symbiosis between private and public schools in Lebanon gave a fantastic result. And I think the difference between our public uh, uh, school levels in Lebanon compared to the 1,000 kilometer away radius in Lebanon is due, is due to this symbiosis. And that's personally what I think. I, I, so we spent 25 minutes on something really important. Okay. Uh, I would like to you guys all mentioned something really important. I think we should not forget two things. One is, what is the sustainable differentiation for Lebanese in this area? So uh, when we talk about us being brilliant, us being smart, there's government programs, there's a billion two Indians, there's a billion five Chinese. So I think it's very critical we sit back, retrench, and say, as Lebanese Canadians specifically and Lebanese North Americans, what is the sustainable differentiation? I was gonna add the educational system. Yeah. Uh, in general, like private, public. Uh, I went to the IC, I feel like shit now for going there. Uh, this was the purpose. Uh, I'm missing a lot of the words. Sorry, sorry for that, but I just, I wanted to say, I think it's critical that we look at our differentiators as a nation, or what not we call a nation, because it's very politically motivated. And I think the other part is, if you look at the intellectual wealth, and please, not insulting anyone, I love everything about the country. If we look at the intellectual wealth, how much of it is outside versus inside and how are we doing it to make it help go participate? L like you talk at the meeting of the minds, I go to Lebanon, I see him before I see my family because there's a melting of the mind and how we're gonna create sustainable IP, sustainable revenue, and how do we invest in the country? So I, I'm not disagreeing with any of the notions, but I think it's critical we sit together and say, how do we get this 10 million Lebanese outside Lebanon? 
how the hell do we get them to think of Lebanon as a place where they can go, not just invest the traditional go, uh, which is brilliant, and I would do it in a heartbeat. But, but how do we go say, sponsor a kid? Uh, that is and not more important. How do we say, there's a startup from Lebanon where I'm buying something from it, be it $5 or $100, half a million bucks. So anyway, so not disagreeing, but I think, I really want to focus on the fact that people here think there's a massive amount of supply, intellectual supply that they can call on, and we make it easy as a nation to go do business. So, and it didn't mean to interrupt uh, no, the, the discussion. No, I, I think these are all valid points. I think education, talent, uh, build, building on that wealth of intellectual differentiation between us and, and, and the rest of the world is, is crucial. I think we need to build on that, and all the points are, are definitely valid. Uh, I, I will jump now to uh, Mr. Rabia Nassar. Rabia has uh, founded Element N and their latest product is Crypto.io and has been one of the earlier startups from Lebanon to scale internationally. Rabia, you have, you have been serving clients mainly in North America and lately in Canada. Uh, can you share a bit with us your uh, success and struggles uh, in entering those markets and how you believe this learning can help us all in supporting other startups to scale faster into those markets, create wealth for Lebanese, and grow uh, to those markets. Because we know that a startup in Lebanon is not made for Lebanon. We need to scale internationally, and you've, you've made it. So please share with us your struggles and your successes. Thank you. First, I uh, would like to thank uh, uh, the, the ministry for organizing the LDE and for, for inviting us here. And, and thank you for having me on this panel. Uh, so before I, I, I answer this question directly, just want to touch a little bit on, on what has been. So one of the reasons I decided to start up in Lebanon, although if you think about the 90s or the two, early 2000s, that was not the place to do any technology. Um, because the central question was brain drain, how can we retain all these talents, how can we make Lebanon more competitive, give Lebanon a competitive identity. And the question is in production, producing something, not just being, uh, pardon the expression, service uh, prostitutes <laughs> for, for, for the region or, or, or beyond. Uh, producing stuff, creating, being creative, at creating value. And uh, so I've, I've had a, uh, um, like, I've, I've had all my education in Lebanon, but after that I left, and I could have, and I've, I've, I've started, I've, uh, I've created, I've co-founded companies abroad, but I decided at some point in the early 2000s to come back to Beirut and to create a startup there, which is not an easy task. It's been now 16, 17 years after. It's extremely hard to, uh, in the environment, to be able to succeed and be able to uh, create value that can be seen internationally. I mean, create, a, create a, an enterprise that can be seen internationally as valuable and that can scale. Uh, and that takes a lot of passion and a lot of uh, 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 recklessness at some point. So now, now th th that on the side, how I was able to, uh, uh, to scale or, you know, we're at the beginning of that also internationally. So the first thing is, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, and this, I'm addressing this to younger entrepreneurs, people that are starting now, you have to create value, you have to create you have to solve a big problem that, that people everywhere are willing to pay money for. You have to be focused. Uh, you have to be the best at what you're doing. At least try to be the best at what you're doing. And, uh, and uh, so that, I mean, this is really the, the cornerstone. Uh, when we, I mean, so, so the, the purpose of my, my company was initially to, cre uh, to create technology that can scale around the world from Lebanon. That was, really that was the, the business model, not actually the product. And of course the product itself, we had clear ideas of how we can add value, uh, specifically the, the latest startup, Scripta.io, in the IoT domain. Uh, now we understood early on that we needed a platform, an international platform, to offer, uh, you know, to use uh, as a launching pad to reach customers and partners, and we decided to move to New York City. We've established a presence in New York City from 2008. And uh, this is where we started developing our distribution channels and customer uh, relationships. 
Now that has helped a lot. It is extremely hard for a company that is looks 100% Lebanese to be able to attract global customers. We do. There's a stigma associated with uh, with Lebanon. We're not known for technology in particular. There are amazingly brilliant Lebanese all around the world that that I keep meeting and discovering, and it's always overwhelming to see such uh, I mean su such talented people serving in, in leadership positions everywhere. But the country itself is not branded for technology, and approaching international uh, uh, customers, or large organizations, with a company that is 100% Lebanese is still not possible. So my advice for startups, you need some kind of uh, international launch pad. But hopefully, you know, after we, I'm, I am hoping to be part of that su Lebanon success at some point. There are a lot of amazing Lebanese startups also around us. Hopefully, we get to remove that stigma down the line with the help of the funds also. I mean, uh, Lebanon, uh, let's say Lebanon has been completely transformed in the past, I'd say, eight years, six to eight years, with uh, funds like Veritech and the, and the Veritech uh, Initiative and MVP and, and, all the, and the, uh, the Circle of 331 from the Central Bank. And, and so hopefully, down the line, uh, we, I'd say we, we would succeed if the people that would come after us would not have to face the same difficulties that we faced and where they can go and address international markets and people would see the value and they would not question the origin as, as whatever we've faced so far. Thank you so much, Rabia. We're, we're, running, we're running short on time, so I will, I will jump to, uh, to Cedric. Cedric. You, uh, you're here because you've been leading the first, uh, the first initiative of supporting and attracting international VCs and international startups to move to Montreal being a hub for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So uh, take us through this journey. Tell us why Montreal is the right spot uh, to, uh, to attract you know, uh, startups. Why do you think the Canadian ecosystem and Montreal ecosystem is, is the right one? And uh, why do you think Lebanese uh, startups that would have a product market fit to North America should launch from Montreal? Thank you, Ami. Uh, is it working? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I work for Montreal International. Uh, one of our big mandates is foreign direct investment for the city of Montreal. So we help uh, international companies come open subsidiaries in Montreal. So the Facebooks, Amazon, Googles, Samsung, Thales will open most of them AI labs in Montreal. We've been helping them along the way. Uh, a few months ago, we got the new mandate from the government to attract uh, entrepreneurs and startups to launch and move their startup to Montreal. Uh, this was because of a need inside the community. Uh, since 2015, the startup ecosystem in Montreal has been uh, expanding greatly, evolving greatly. And uh, one of the issues is that internationally, there's no uh, it's not really well connected internationally. So that's why my, my mandate was also created, um, to create links with different ecosystems around the world. Uh, Montreal is known as an AI capital right now, with all these uh, AI labs opening up, and they've opened up because of all that talent that has been uh, created in Montreal with the, the MILA, the Montreal Institute of Learning Algorithms, where you have more than 200 PhD students uh, in AI. So all this critical mass of talent has made Montreal an AI city hub. Uh, but we also have uh, different industries like FinTech, uh, creative industries also we have a lot of uh, traction. Um, so that's it for that, for the talent. Uh, the government, also another big reason why uh, an ecosystem is a good AI, a startup ecosystem, it's the, the government supporting the different initiatives. And we have from the federal, the provincial, the provincial and even the municipal uh, government, we have Fundings, we have grants, we have support. They're supporting our accelerators, our incubators, our VCs. So that's really um, another reason why Montreal is a great startup ecosystem. Uh, another reason, it's the presence of pillar companies. So like uh, Shadi Habib here with Desjardins, who created Desjardins Lab, uh, and a few other big companies who are really involved inside the tech ecosystem, the startup ecosystem, in order to help it grow and thrive. So these are, I'm not going to repeat the other points that uh, Rula and Shadi have uh, mentioned earlier, but uh, these are a few of the, the reasons. So my mandate now, right now, is to, uh, to travel a bit and to connect with different ecosystems, like I did with, uh, with Veritech, which is honestly an amazing, uh, like you guys uh, are doing an amazing work for Lebanon, really. 
and that's Great. about it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cedric. Cedric has been very helpful in getting us to connect with the entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem. Uh, just before we close, I have a, a small announcement to correct something that was said on the previous panel. The Cedars Diaspora event that's happening tomorrow is organized by the Chamber of Commerce of uh, Canada Liban, Chamber of Commerce and uh, of Canada Liban, and it's done in, in uh, partnership with uh, Banque Nationale, and it's going to be held in uh, Ville Saint Marie tomorrow at 11:45. So, uh, without delaying, because I know we have we have few more things, I want to thank the panelists for for uh, being here, for the input you've given, and uh, we'll leave the stage for the for the next event to take place. Let's Thank take you. a picture all together before you go. Thank you. And the tax credit. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs>